Alright guys, how are you doing? In this video, I'm going to do another Chevy C10 body because this one got a little bit trashed partly because I never ran it with a back bumper partly because I didn't glue that on someone said to shoe glue this bit onto there it's going to make it last longer so I'm going to do that on the next one So, I've got a new body here I'm going to do it almost exactly the same but this time I'm going to paint it red like on the picture here Reason being, because red's my special colour, what I like painting a lot of my stuff, and also this colour here doesn't show up that well on camera. It tends to sort of wash out and then it just looks sort of white and I don't know, it looks really good in real life. Up in up in person it looks really, really good, but on camera it always kind of looks, I don't know, especially when I'm recording with a smartphone outside, it always kind of gets a sort of washed out look like that. So a lot of people ask me what colour red I use, so I've got two reds here. One is a Core RC red, and the other one is from Abzema. They're actually exactly the same, I think. I'm pretty sure they're exactly the same, just with a different sticker on them. And then, after I've done that, I'm going to back it with white, because if you look up here, hold on, let me take you off the tripod. Might be a little bit tricky to see, but if you back it with white, you get a lot more of a brighter red, like that one there. And if you back it with black, then it tends to come out a little bit darker, like this one here. And I, I prefer the light one myself, so that's what I'm going to do. Also, I've had a few comments where people say they don't like the music that I put into my videos. So just for this video, I'm going to try with no music at all, just me talking. So give us a note in the comments, guys, what do you think? Is it better with a little bit of music every now and then? Is it better with just talking and no music at all? I don't know, let me know, guys. You know, I just want to do whatever the majority of the people would like me to do. So let me know in the comments, guys. Right, let's get cracked on with this body. Alright, so first things first, what I always like to do on these body shells, I always like to roughly cut it out first, then lay it on the car, and just see how everything lines up. Now to get this body shell to fit nicely, a lot of people keep asking, I see it a lot on the Facebook forums, is you have to turn this, this shock part round, and then I'm using these shock towers here from a Traxxas X01. And you've got to cut them down a little bit, and then that kind of comes out like that, look guys. Just fits on that part there. But you still got to cut a little bit out here, just for these shock tower things here to clear look. So, no biggie really, but that's that. Then also, what I did on this one, I cut the chassis down a little bit. As you can see here, there's only one hole. And as standard, you get two holes. So I cut that last hole off of an angle grinder and just used one of these front mounts upside down and that kind of makes it line up pretty perfectly for this body shell look. That's pretty much spot on there. So this body actually guys is going to go on this TRX4 here. This one's going to be the nice one. So guys, if you ever see me beat on this one in the videos, let me know that I've got to be careful with it, just remind me. Because I get carried away really easily. And I'll do that with pretty much all my RC cars. I go out and I think, right, it's all nice, it's looking all brand new. I'll, I'll just take a little bit of care of it. But then, literally 30 seconds of driving it, it gets the better of me. And it kind of all goes south from there and ends up a big pile of mess. And probably, guys, that's probably what's going to happen with this thing when this thing's finished. Oh, dark in here. That's probably going to happen when this thing is finished, guys. I'm probably going to look at it. It's all going to look nice. I'm going to kind of think to myself, look after it for a little while. But it's just too easy to get carried away with these sort of things, guys. It's probably just going to end up a big heap of mess on the floor. All right, so I've got these curvy scissors here, guys. And what that means is just a little bit easier to go around wheel arches like this. If you don't know where to find them, guys, most model shops, Amazon, eBay, they're just called curved body shell scissors. So we're going for the rough cut first. But at this point now, I'll probably have some music playing, but I'm just trying something else. Let's try a video without any music. It makes it easier, it makes my life easier, not having to edit it all in. And if people actually prefer it without music, then I don't know. Well, I, I, you know personally, I quite like music. Not, not too much, because there's so many different music tastes out there. It's difficult to sort of put one sort of music on there to please everybody. But I'll kind of try and do it so there's not too much music. I'll just sort of do a bit of talking then do a little bit of music while there's something like this going on. Maybe speed it up a little bit. Same with the bashing. I'll try and mix it up a little bit. Try and talk a bit, hear a bit of the RC noises. 
then do a bit of slow motion stuff maybe with a bit of music in the background. I'll try and mix it up a little bit to keep things interesting. So, I don't know guys, I've got a feeling that this video might be a little bit boring without any music there, but I don't know, let me know. All right, so what I would normally do, I would now set that on there and just sort of kind of see whereabouts you've got to cut things off. But because I've done this same body before, I can kind of copy it. And I did actually cut the bumpers off completely because the first time around I didn't and all that happens because I didn't run this bumper, I just took the bumper off and I just ran it with this bumper on the on the body like this here. And what was happening was every time it caught the back it was just ripping it all up and that's why all this is all trashed here. So this time I'm going to cut this bumper off and just rely on the standard bumper that's already on the car. The same on the front, cut that bumper off as well and just rely on the bumper that's already on there. All right, so marking this bit here is going to be really easy, so I can just use the old bit as a template. Trying to mark that up where it's got to go like that, and then just draw around it. All right, so now all that I've got to do, just to get the, all the cutting out done and all the mounting done, is just cut these holes out here. Like the idea here, here guys, uh, oh, well, I don't really know what the idea is, but if I was to try and cut this out with a pair of scissors, that's just never gonna get around them corners. And if I do it with a knife, I'm gonna end up slipping and scoring it. So I'm just kind of doing as much as I can with this and then probably attack it with a soldering iron. So if you want to laugh guys, you can. Alright, no laughing guys. Alright, it's not the best job in the world. And it's kind of a shame that you even got to do this. It'd be nice if they made a body that actually fits the TRX4 perfectly. I mean these, these bodies are really supposed to be for an Axial SCX10. So I think it looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do now, I think I'm going to paint it and then while that's drying, I can adjust all the body posts and everything on this one, cut the chassis down a little bit. Because the thing is, it's, got, it's going to move in one hole's worth here. So we cut the chassis about here. But if I want to run the Land Rover body or the, um, the tactical unit body, then I can still move that back out into the one hole there. Ah, before I forget, I've got this little giveaway going on for the 30,000 subscriber special. Not so much of a special prize. I mean, when we get to 50,000, I'll do something a little bit better. I'll give away the, the um, oh, what's it called? The castle. Oh, I just can't get it. So 50,000 subscribers, guys, I'm gonna give this thing away. It's a Sidewinder free combo, and you get the 4600 KV motor. And that's a sensor ready motor. Uh, ESC is sensorless. But yeah, so that'll be at 50,000. For this giveaway, just a little light set. I, mean, I think they're really meant to be for a touring car or for a drift car, something like that. But you can put them on like your TRX4 or something like that as well. So, if you want to win this, guys, the first person to leave a comment down below, and you've got to answer this question, guys. What ESC has AS Steve got in his Savage? So the first person to put the right answer down below, guys, I'm going to put a, I'm going to put a comment on that, like a response. And that's the person that wins. All the rules down below, guys. So make sure you read the rules. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's paint the body. All right, so every time I paint a body, guys, I always get a little scouring pad and just rough the inside up. That just gives the paint something to stick to. Make sure you don't go over the windows, guys, because that's going to make it look messy. And it does make it look all scratched up, but as soon as you get a bit of paint on there, you won't even notice. That's why if you look at this, even though look how beat up it is, all the paint still stuck on there. Next step, I'll get a bit of this brake cleaner stuff. You can use washing up liquid as well, dish soap. 
If you're going to use brake cleaner, guys, I'll test it on a bit of an off cut first just to make sure it's not going to attack your plastic. I've been using this stuff here for years, and I know it doesn't harm the plastic at all. If you get any grease off that's in there, it'll just make the paint stick nicer. If anyone knows, if there's an easy way of getting these window masks in, guys, give me a note in the comments. I've been struggling with this for years. You get one corner lined up and you think it's all good and you get to the other end and it's miles out. See, it's so hard. I mean, that's almost perfect, but you can't just move it a little bit. You pull it off and go again. And you, only get, you only get so many goes and this stuff doesn't stick anymore. All right, that's as good as it's gonna get, guys. Not pulling it off again. If you know the trick behind this, guys, let me know. All right, so next, I'm gonna go around it with this masking tape because I want to give it the right roof like on this one. So I'm going to go around it with the masking tape, spray everything red first, let it dry, then we're going to pull the masking tape off and just spray everything white. And not only is that going to make the red show through nicer, it's going to give it the white roof. And then this window mask thing, the leftover, that's like a perfect, almost a perfect shape. This is chucking on the roof there. Push that in like that. And then all you've got to do is just kind of tape up the edges where it's exposed. All right, I think she's all ready, guys. Ready for that first coat of red. And after I've been messing about there with my greasy fingers, I normally just quickly just go round it again just to make sure I get any fingerprints off of there. Someone actually commented that to me ages ago. Like I go for the effort of degreasing it, then I'll get my greasy fingers back in there. And yep, you are absolutely right. So there we go, all the greasy fingerprints gone. The other thing that I do, guys, I bring these cans indoors just to warm up a little bit because when they're cold, they don't spray on that nice. They get all a bit blotchy. So they're pretty warm now. Give them a good shake and let's get this thing sprayed up. All right, so while that's drying, Gonna adjust this TRX4 here to take that body. So what I wanna do, I wanna cut this part of the chassis off. So pretty much what I'll do is just set my vernier caliper. So just on the edge of that hole like that, lock it off. And then you can use the point of it just to make yourself a line like that. Scratch a line like that all the way around. All right, so as you can see now, guys, you've got a perfect line that you can follow to so either get your hacksaw around there or your angle grinder. guys cringing already but the thing is see that goes in all the way like that now you can still screw it on like that if you do want to run it with a standard position but also you can just leave it in that position and just move the bumper back out if you ever want to bring it out a bit further and you could drill another hole in the chassis but I don't think it needs it I think just the one hole there that should be more than enough that's not going to go anywhere is it where's it going to go All right, another little trick here, guys. I got the idea for someone on Facebook. I can't remember who it was. So this is the standard mount, which mounts on like that. You, if you want to raise the bumper up, you can turn that round. But with the rear mount, that just makes it way too high for this particular body. So we can use a front mount. And the front mount, mounted upside down, absolutely spot on perfect. And then for this particular body, I found if you just run that all the way in, then that should be the perfect position. All right, front. So on the front, we don't need to buy any new parts, but we're still flipping over this mount. We don't have to do any chassis chopping neither. So 
I'm not a fan of this fake winch, so that's coming off. And to be honest, I'm not a fan of any winches or models because, to be honest, it's just, it's just as easy just to pick it up by hand and move it. But each their own. Some people enjoy all that scale stuff. Me, not so much. I do quite like the scale look, but I'm not that overly bothered about all the little fine details. What I quite like, you know, what I find the fun in is making something look fairly scale and give it quite a sort of a scale appearance and everything. But then at the same time, have it perform like really, really well. Like put a success motor in there and just have the thing, you know, being able to do sort of like stupid speeds. And then at the same time, be able to look scale and crawl it really slowly. And that for me, that's where the fun is at. I think if this thing was permanently slow, I think I'd get bored of it quite quick. But I do enjoy the slow crawls as well, so... I think I've built something here which is sort of the best of both worlds. Alright, so rear shock towers, obviously they've got to come out. And then this part here, I actually spin round the other way around. You've got to be really careful guys if you use these things for doing these bolts up. I'll normally do the last little bit by hand. Because it's so easy just to go that little bit too far and just strip the threads out. We've got these mounts here, these are out of an X01 and they fit in there absolutely perfectly but they're just that little bit too long so we've just got to cut the bottom off so I'll just get the side cutters out again We've got to make a new hole in there, look, because the holes don't go all the way up. So that's, that's really easy, guys. All you've got to do, stick it in the hole all the way down the lowest position and just mark it with your drill. I wouldn't drill all the way through because you'll probably miss, some, miss something else up. So just mark it, it's enough like that, and just drill all the way through. Beautiful! I've seen a lot of people they use one of these front mounts to put on the rear to get it down but you can't get them down as low, it's got this thing here in the way and even with the lowest setting you can't get that down anywhere near as low as these XO1 mounts Ah! Almost forgot guys! This front shock mount hit the uh, front shock mount this front um, body post, so you just got to go up one hole and also these side steps are just way too low for that body shell and then we've got to move these bars up a little bit because they look too low with this body so we want them up, up around about here somewhere so what we need for that are some slightly longer screws these ones here are M3 by 18s. And then, this is what I did, a bit of a bodge, I know, but these are some M4 nylock screws. And I found if you put them on there, it actually makes two of them, makes a perfect spacer. Then you got a kind of longer screw. Of course, guys, there's probably better spaces that you can use for this, but it's what I've got laying around and it's what works. Last little bit by hand so we don't strip the plastic. Yeah, that's probably better like that anyway, look, guys, because it makes it more flush with the rest of the underneath there. So let's do the other side and then. Put the last coat of paint on the body shell. All right, so it's kind of dried now. Finish wise, uh, it's a bit crappy to be honest. I mean, the trouble is when it's cold, all the paint you put on doesn't want to stick, it just runs. And uh, look, there's a big fat run there. If you hold it up to the light, I don't know if you can see that on camera. Uh, it's not the, uh, no, it's actually pretty crappy guys. 
So, well, I'm going to make the best of it. I'm going to put the white on now. God knows what it's going to come out like. So it's probably going to end up being my beater body eventually. And in the summer, I'll do another one and do a better job of it. It'll look good from a distance. All right, well, the other thing is, getting the paint to go actually inside here, guys, is so difficult. I mean, I don't know what the trick is, if there's actually a proper way of doing it, but it's virtually impossible to try and get a nice coat on the inside here. So I was just blasting it and just hoping that it's just going to kind of stick. So if any of you guys got any better techniques of doing that, guys, let me know in the comments. And any other tips in paint, any other tips in general, guys, for painting? Wouldn't go amiss, because it's not really my strong point. Hopefully, guys, it's not going to look too bad when it's done. We will see. Here's another body shell that I like, guys, the old Bronco. And they've actually stopped making this body shell. And these were the last ones I had left, so I had to buy them all because, you know, once these are gone, that's it, no more. So I bought all the ones that they had. And I've actually done the same thing with this Bulldog here for the Rustler. I mean, it's such a nice body. It's probably my, my favourite body for the Rustler. And they stopped making this body shell as well. So I, I just bought them all what they had left. There's like 16 of them there. Maybe went a little bit overkill there, but... Yeah, still drying, nearly done. Moment of truth, guys. What's it come out like? I reckon it's gonna be not too bad. Actually, that's not too bad. I mean, it's not perfect. It's got a little bit of white seeping through in places. Not bad. Someone in my last video, where I've done this body shell here, said that it's a good idea to shoe goo the two halves together, and that should hopefully stop that from happening. So, I'll give that a go and put that theory to the test. I quite like the idea personally. Guys, I noticed one little trick here. These little plastic screws here are hard to get on. If you get a body reamer, and just sham for that first edge where it goes on a little bit, then that should go on there a lot easier. All right, here's the moment of truth, guys. What does it look like? What do you reckon, guys? I think it looks pretty good. I mean, it's not perfect. You got a little bit of the white bleeding through a little bit. I mean, it's a bit hard to see on camera. But I reckon it looks pretty good. Here's the old one. As you can see, that colour washes out so badly. Which makes it difficult to film this one. I mean, in real life, that colour looks awesome. But when you're really outside and you're filming with it, you see the red, it's a lot more forgiving for the camera. It just makes that stand out a lot better. So this thing here just goes white. I mean, if you adjust the exposure, I mean, this is what it's supposed to, this is pretty much what it actually looks like in real life. And that looks pretty cool. But when you're out filming and the camera's set to auto, it always kind of, kind of comes out something like that. So I reckon the red, definitely for video purposes, definitely looks better. But I don't know, I think they both look pretty cool, guys. Alright, so that's it for this video, guys. Let me know in the comments, what do you think of this style of video? Is it better about the music? I mean, it makes my life a hell of a lot easier. I don't have to edit it, I don't have to try and make all the cuts match up with the music. And it makes my life so much easier. So, that, you know, in turn, that probably mean that I could do more workshop videos if I haven't got to put all the music in. With the bashing videos, I think I'm still going to mix it up. A bit of music, a bit of just hearing just the natural sound what they make, a bit of talking, a bit of having a laugh, just a bit of everything. I'm just going to mix it up a little bit and just, just see 
what sort of works out best. All right, guys, I hope you liked that video. If you did, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, smash the bell button, stay notified, share the video with your buddies. See you soon, guys.